Matter exists in a variety of different forms in the universe referred to as states of matter. Each state of matter has its distinct characteristics and attributes that define how it interacts both with itself and with the universe around it. Most people have heard of three states of matter as elementary school children. Today, we seek to expand beyond the previous boundaries and explore the very limits of reality itself. But first, ponder upon this question. How does matter transition between different states of matter? Firstly, a state of matter is an emergent property, meaning that at the atomic and the subatomic scales, there is no state of matter. For example, a water molecule is not liquid or solid, nor does it have a temperature or pressure. But with a countless number of water molecules, we obtain a state of matter through their interactions with each other. A change in the state of matter of a substance is known as a state change. Ice melting into water is an example of a state change, and gas ionizing into an unfathomably fierce plasma is another example. There are two methods of achieving a state change, a change in temperature or a change in pressure. Phase diagrams are scientific models that examine the state of matter that a substance is in when at a specified temperature and pressure. We will explore both of these concepts further along the atomic adventure. The first Solids are a state of matter where the intermolecular forces between particles are stronger than the kinetic energy of the particles themselves. The energy is low. Solids with particles that arrange themselves in a regular translational and repeating pattern are known as crystalline solids. Ice, the solid form of water, is an organized crystal with a regular array of water molecules aligned in a specific orientation due to hydrogen bonding. Not all solids are rigid in structures like crystals, though. If a liquid is frozen fast enough, the f particles do not have time to arrange themselves in the orderly structure of a crystal and forms an amorphous solid. Quasar crystals are solids that resemble an intermediate stage between crystals and amorphous solids. Their particles are ordered, like that in a crystal, yet the particles are not arranged in a periodic sequence. Instead, they are aperiodic and symmetrical and not translational. The first quasi-crystal discovered was an aluminum-manganese alloy arranged in an icosahedron. Instead of each atom interacting with adjacent atoms, like in regular crystals, atoms interact with others three atoms away. Plastic crystals contain atoms of crystalline order that can move around to some extent. Plastic crystals that move around in a disorganized way are known as orientational glass. Through a state change of melting, solid particles gain enough energy to move around freely, weakening their intermolecular forces to such a degree. Liquids are characterized by the ability of their particles to move around while still in close contact with other liquid particles. Liquids cannot be compressed as there is not enough space between particles to reduce the volume of the, flu of the liquid. Liquids are a type of fluid, any material that, that flows when shear stress is applied. Liquid crystals are substances that can flow like a liquid but have long-range order, like a crystal. The particles of a liquid crystal have an elongated shape, with the centers being the thickest. There are three types of liquid crystals, thermotropic, lyotropic, and metallotropic. Thermotropic liquid crystals are liquid crystals that form from temperature differences. There are three main types of thermotropic liquid crystals. Pneumatic, smectic, and cholesteric. Pneumatic liquid crystals, or thread-like liquid crystals, contain molecules of only long-range orientation with no positional order. Pneumatic liquid crystals are simplest liquid crystals. Smectic liquid crystals, or soap-like, contain molecules arranged in strata as the particles are arranged in an almost normal plane with spacing between layers. Cholesteric liquid crystals, also known as chiral pneumatic liquid crystals, contain a combination of smectic and pneumatic liquid crystals with layers arranged in a helix. The science surrounding liquid crystals is still relatively recent and complex, and we encourage you to have a look at our additional sources at the end of our video. If a liquid reaches a high enough temperature or a low enough pressure, it undergoes a state change known as boiling. If a solid undergoes a state change directly to a gas, the solid is said to have gone through sublimation. 
A common question to ask is, what is the difference between evaporation, vaporization, and boiling? In a nutshell, vaporization is a general term to describe a solid or liquid undergoing a state change into a gas, which includes boiling, while evaporation is a gradual state change of a liquid into a gas. Gas is a state of matter in which the particles have broken their intermolecular forces to the point where they have virtually no effect on the movement of the particles. Gases neither have a fixed volume or shape. Instead, gases fill up their containers. Gas particles contain more energy than both solid and liquid particles. Many people are tripped up on the difference between steam and water vapor. Steam is an invisible gas obtained by boiling water. However, water vapor is the gaseous form of water when liquid water is evaporated. Steam is an invisible gas while water vapor appears as mist and fog and is transparent. Gases are a key concept in fluid mechanics, which we will dive into soon. Traditionally, this is as far as a student can learn in school. However, let's dig deeper. When studying phase diagrams, you will find that the border between a liquid and a gas stops at a specific temperature and pressure known as the critical point. After the critical point, the matter will become a supercritical fluid, a state of matter with both liquid-like and gas-like particles and properties. If the particles in a gas are energized enough, the nucleus and the electrons of the individual atoms can separate. The gas is said to have undergone ionization into a plasma. A plasma can be deionized or recombined back into a gas. Plasma is a state of matter with fascinating properties. Due to the electric charge of its constituent particles, the movement of the particles creates electric and magnetic fields that affect the movement of other particles. In a sense, plasma is an amorphous blob of self-interacting matter. Plasma that contains particles of neutral electric charge is known as partially ionized, while plasma that contains no electrically neutral particles is known as fully ionized. Most of the universe is plasma. Stars and galaxies are all plasma. An example of plasma that you can easily find on Earth is lightning, a partially ionized plasma. The particles plasma is composed of are protons, neutrons, and electrons. While electrons are fundamental particles, the protons and neutrons are composed of even smaller particles known as quarks and gluons, which are bound together by incredibly strong forces. Quantum chromodynamics, or QCD, is the branch of physics that deals with subatomic particles interacting with this strong interaction force, one of the four, four fundamental forces in nature. Once plasma is heated enough, the nucleons deconfine into their elementary particles. The state of matter is known as a quark gluon plasma and has a temperature of 7 times 10 to the 12 Kelvin, known as the Hagedorn temperature. The elementary particles begin to flow with a characteristic of a liquid. Quark gluon plasmas have been artificially created in the Large Hadron Collider, the LHC, in heavy ion collisions. In these ion collisions, gold or lead nuclei are thrust against each other at such high speeds and energy that the elementary particles binding the nucleons are set free, creating an explosion of fundamental particles. Quark gluon plasmas are predicted to have existed at the very beginning of our universe, when everything was so dense and energetic that hadrons could not have formed. In the current universe, though, there is only one potential source of quark gluon plasmas, the cores of the corpses of stars known as neutron stars. Matter composed of purely subatomic particles is called quark matter. Neutron star cores may be made of quark matter, a general state of matter in which quarks and gluons are freed. These objects are known as quark stars. Color superconductivity is a state of matter in QCD that contains Cooper pairs, two electrons that orbit each other. 
near the Fermi surface of the object, a surface that separates the occupied and the unoccupied electrons. Watch our video on intermolecular intramolecular forces. This property breaks what is known as color gauge symmetry. Fermions are a class of particles composed of particles with a half-odd integer spin. We will go into the classification of fermions in more detail, but for now, you can understand it as a large umbrella category of particles containing protons, neutrons, and electrons, among others. Fermions are sustained through a rule known as the Pauli exclusion principle, which states that no two particles can have the identical properties or, or occupy the same space. When matter is compressed to densities of unfathomable magnitude, the object will sustain itself against the force of gravity through the Pauli exclusion principle, as the subatomic particles cannot touch each other. Matter prevented from collapsing through the exclusion principle is known as degenerate matter. White dwarfs, the corpses of medium-sized stars, are composed of electron degenerate matter, while the surface of neutron stars are composed of neutron degenerate matter. In between the surface and the cores of neutron stars lie nucleons that gradually graze each other, forming long sheets of neutrons that begin to resemble pasta, which is known as nuclear pasta. Physicists recently discovered that the length of topology of nuclear pasta depends on the density of the neutron star, the temperature of the star, and the number of protons. At the core of neutron stars, if the pressure becomes great enough, the quark gluon plasma can begin to turn into strange matter, a degenerate matter composed of a type of quark known as strange quarks. Strange matter is really threatening. Now let us journey backwards. Bosons are another large umbrella category of fundamental particles that have a quantum spin of non-negative integers. Unlike fermions, bosons do not obey the exclusion principle. If a gas is cooled significantly, the atoms and the substance undergo a significant change. The bosons and the substance com combine into a single quantum system. A fermionic condensate is similar to a Bose-Einstein condensate, except it is composed of fermions. Though restricted by the exclusion principle, fermions combine together and behave like a boson. A superfluid is a fluid that possesses zero viscosity, resistance to flow, and thus does not lose kinetic energy. A supersolid is a superfluid with ordered particles. Moving on, we journey into the realm of Vizar. Firstly, there is photonic matter in which photons, the elementary particles of light, behave like matter. The photonic matter is light with mass after interacting with gas. The Rydberg polaron is a giant atom with smaller atoms actually orbiting within it. A Rydberg atom is an atom which a single electron is elevated to a high energy level. Finally, a time crystal is a structure occupying its lowest possible energy state that constantly oscillates between different orientations, resembling a crystal in space-time. Conclusion The list of states of matter covers most of the states currently discovered, yet with time, more and more states of matter will be discovered. Already, scientists have discovered a state of matter that creates a second temporal dimension, and debates and investigations are being carried out to determine whether or not consciousness can be classified as a state of matter. Thank you for watching this formal video of the Information Institute.